so another couple of days pass without any change to the situation. We're still far apart, talking to each other. So we come to May 15th, Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, got it pat down. <laughs> Shout it out. Yeah, I will! <laughs> From far apart, Mio and I converse at the student council room. Well, it's sort of like a comedy, yes, but... <laughs> Overkill. I think so, yes. We can't do this forever, you know. We need Mio to persuade him. If Mio can do it, and Yuri seems quiet. I can hear every word they say. But well, whatever. I'll just ignore it. Come to think of it, there were some obscure numbers in one passage of this document. Yo, Choto <laughs> In Japanese. About this document I have here, there are some numbers that have a different magnitude than last year. What's the meaning of this? <laughs> no, don't, don't come near me, no! No, that's okay then. I'll ask someone else. See, now you make me all sad. You are what the hell are you doing? <laughs> As she hears my reply, a whimper escapes her and she assumes a gloomy look. You see, you are so sad. How could you, Yuma? You see, even now Yuri is worried too, you know. Man, Yuma, this is a, this is a stupid plan, seriously. <laughs> Tsukishima mumbles Mio's name, but I pretend I didn't notice and hit the senpai. Sorry to bother you, Senpai. I have a question regarding a number here. Could you take a look? No! Go ask Mio! You go there, Yuma! You cannot ignore, you're only making it worse, no, Yuma. This is not a solution. I can't go near her after all. I'm certainly concerned about Mio. Then why aren't you doing anything about it? You can't, you can't just ignore the problem. But I set my mind on this. I've decided I won't take any risks that might lead to her passing out again. Uh, making her sad is even worse, trust me. <laughs> it's an established fact that I haven't seen Mio cry even once since I put my plan into practice last week. For one week. Yeah, don't you pity her? Yuma, you cold-hearted guy. <laughs> <laughs> Big hater, old man, okay. Could you put that to rest for now and take a look at the document instead? No, no, I'm not gonna put it to rest. If I were in Anshu's, I'm not gonna do that. No one is going to. Damn it. When I threw a quick glance towards Mio while I was showing Senpai the document, I saw a sad expression plastered on her face. You see? What are you doing? Seriously. Ay. Then, the next day, May 16th, Thursday. Yuma san, what you you is she regretting what his, his actions now? Is this late already, huh? Uh, it's already night time. As Tina informs me that everyone has already left, I raise my leaden bottom from the sofa. Oh, as in, it's the, it's the morning, but it's the last to leave. I can still make it to school on time if I leave right now, but I will have to walk at a faster pace than usual. No, you don't have to walk, you just run. <laughs> uh, it's very simple because because Yuma wants to avoid, yeah, he wants to avoid Mio basically. 
そうです一緒に行けばミャオさんもコナミさんもいます That's the thing. He doesn't want to go with Mio in particular. Miao. And there you have your reason. Dakara? So, pari imi ga wakari masen ne. Recently, I began to leave later than Konami. I have her go with Mio to school, just the two of them. As long as I'm with her, there is a chance that I might end up touching her by some chance. Uh. So, I guess this is not really a well structured、uh, sentence because there is a chance that I might end up touching her by some chance. <laughs> uh, I, you don't need there is a chance. Either, it's either you take out the there is a chance or you take out the by some chance. Yeah, you, you use either one, you don't need both. But anyway, <laughs> just me complaining. So, this is a measure to reduce state risk as much as possible. Oh, I have to leave now or I'll be late. Alright then, take care of the house. Hi, I'm a cassette. What's you, my doing, seriously? <sighs> Can't believe this guy. Seen off by Tina and Kotaro, I quickly head to school. The moment I entered the,、uh, entered the classroom, I was greeted by Sol. Yo. I kind of ended up leaving the house somewhat late today. Mio chan to a isho jan a kata no ka? For certain reasons, we went to school separately to get today. Eh, mezura shi koto mo aru mon da no. You know, at this rate, ah,、uh, you know, at this rate, their friendship is going to like break apart, you know. You know, like seriously, you might, you're not thinking straight. I walk up to my seat in the course of this short exchange. Upon noticing me, Nuo greeted me from her seat. There's still some time before homeroom starts. Which means I'll have to. Morning, Nuo. Jane. What? Morning, Nuo. See you later then. What the hell? You tell her good morning and then say, say see you later. What? This guy. Wow, now, now you must really pissing me off <laughs> right from the start of this episode. <laughs> What? I just place my back onto the desk and then head towards a corner of the room to distance myself from Mio. Yuko. <sighs> I think we need someone to drive some sense into Yuma. I think now would be the perfect person to drive some sense into him right now. <laughs> Slapping him in the face, seriously. Mio's lonely expression crossed my field vision when I walked off. At that moment, my chest constricted so strongly that it hurt. Mio, ohayo. Oh, Yuri chan, ohayo. Zutto kyoshitsu ni nakatta kedo, doko e itte ta no? Zutto, fuki in no kankei de. De, Mio, do sa no sono kao? She's clearly sad, you know. Eh, watashi. なんか変な顔してるうん別に変ってわけじゃないけど It's not weird, it's depressed Yeah, really depressed look Sukishima throws a glance towards me That was enough to make me feel like she's sort of accusing me Yuma, どうしたんだ月島さんの方を見て No, it's nothing. That aside, regarding today's student council work. Ah, so so. Ore to Kaicho a Kaigi de Rusuni Surkara. Tsukishima san no Shiji ni Shitakate Gre. Yeah, Tsukishima, I'll tell you. Don't, don't leave. Talk to Mio. Okay, got it. During my conversation with Sol, my eyes subconsciously wandered towards Mio. So, Nanda. Hana chan wa itsu mo genki da ne. The book. <laughs> BL book again. <laughs> BL book. <laughs> I think you should know, right, Yuri? Okay, yeah, 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 that's right.
Seems the loneliness that surfaced on her face just now isn't showing anymore. Well, that's because you're not there! <laughs> Yet why? Why is it that I still feel like there's a throbbing pain in my heart? Because you're feeling lonely, you, you baka! <laughs> you baka, Yuma! <laughs> just as we entered the break, Tsukishima suddenly approached me. You want something with me? Yeah, she's clearly going to talk about me. Alright. Boro, yeah, Boro, Asaba. Yeah, later. Prompted by Tsukishima, I left the classroom. So, what do you want to talk about? I asked her that when we arrived at the courtyard, which is currently deserted. I don't mind, but is this about Mio by any chance? Pretty much, I mean, that's clearly the most worrying issue right now. Well, I mean, you went as far as to bring me outside when no one is around after all. It's safe to assume that she wants to talk about something that other people, or rather specifically Mio, shouldn't overhear. Additionally, safe to assume her gaze I've recently often been sensing on me is also somehow related. Yeah, precisely, Yuma, what the hell? What can I do? You know the reason I'm doing this, right? Yeah, but this is not a solution, seriously. I don't want to make her pass out again. That's why I put a distance between us like this. And little by little... Yeah, precisely, you're so selfish, Yuma. In response to a statement, I couldn't help but choke on my words. Indeed, it might be arbitrary. But I only thought about what's best for her, but have you... You thought about what's best for her, but have you actually thought about what she thinks of it? That's more important, you know? Yeah, that's not what's best for her, Yuma. Think! Use your, use your head. Your... Face? You never actually notice her face? Seriously, it's this guy. What came to mind was the lonesome expression I saw this morning. And not only that, a couple of days ago when I proposed that we should put a distance between us for a while, she made a sad face. <laughs> In response to that memory, I start to feel suffocation, as if something is squashing my heart. We are not enough, you need to consider Mio's feelings as well, whether she's agreeable to it, but clearly she's not. Declaring that Tsukishima gazes at me pointedly. Yeah. Something more important. Tsukishima's words remain stuck in my chest. She may be right with that. After all, I don't want to cause Mio to wear a sad face. As Tsukishima seems... Uh, what? As Tsukishima seems, me having been lost in thought in spite of myself... What, what kind of line is that? <laughs> she heaves a small sigh. It's okay. Thank you, Tsukishima. You're simply worried about Mio, right? So you're also worried about me? Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> what do you mean? 
浅羽君も生徒会の仲間でしょ Yeah, precisely. I mean, Yuma is actually kind of dense, his vision of her, but he's never been as dense as this right now, which is what really pisses me off. <laughs> that he's so dense in this route. True. And I've apparently caused these colleagues quite the extensive worry. I'm aware of that now. Getting too caught up in my concern for Mio and distancing myself from her as a result. Maybe that was a mistake after all. Yeah, the most important question. The million dollar question. Huh? With that sudden question thrown at me, I'm rendered perplexed. Of course, I love her. Oh, straight to the point. Uh. Then you shouldn't have put love, which means I like her, right? Otherwise, misunderstanding right there. Well, um. Unable to find words to continue, I fall into silence. What kind of like? What kind of like? At that point, she pauses her words temporarily, temporarily and turns her back to me. Leaving me with only that, she returns to the school building. Do you love Mio? Huh. He now so persistently asked me whether I was in love with her. However, I haven't come up with an answer to that question yet. My feelings. I placed a hand on my heart and muttered that under my breath. Better sort this out, Yuma. You better do. Yuri Senpai, when the lesson is over, what do you do next? Then, I'll ask you to go to the next one. I'm going to ask you to go to the next one. I'm going to ask you to go to the next one. I'm going to ask you to go to the next one. Konami takes the documents. Tsukishima hands her and returns to her seat. Uh, most likely because she noticed that my hand stopped moving. Tsukishima addresses me. No, it's nothing. I mean, addressed me. Of course he is. He has to be. No, that's not really the case. Don't lie. It's just that it made me even more unsure regarding how I should conduct myself around Mio. Seriously, what should I do? Sorry for worrying you, Tsukishima. Tsukishima shows a smile, then returns her focus to her work. Well then, I should also concentrate a little more on work. Come on. Huh? I certainly feel a gaze on me and turn towards the direction of the originator. Is something the matter, Mio? She's clearly staring at you. Okay. I'll be a bit concerned regarding Mio's attitude. I get back to my work. Ah. Dan, here's something I don't understand. I need someone to teach me, and there's no one else here but Mio. Ha ha. Ha ha. Alright, Senpai isn't here today. Since the time I started to avoid approaching Mio about a week ago, I've instead been asking Senpai regarding stuff I didn't know. Looks like I don't have any other option. Hey, Mio. Uh, um, as she responds to me, I begin to hem and haw. Ah, 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 it, oh, it. Is it okay to approach her now after what I did? And apart from that, I still don't know how to conduct myself. Don't worry, Mios. 
and understanding girl. Sorry, it was nothing up law. Damn it, Yuma! Come on! So... You coward! Tsukishima, you got a moment? There's something I need to ask you. Nope! Tsukishima is to say, Nope! You go ask me all! Tsukishima comes over to me, looking somewhat concerned about Mio all the while. You see? This is so painful to look at. The moment I took a look at Mio's face, a stabbing pain caused through, caused through my chest once more. Could it be that I really screwed up just now? You did! Well, sorry about that. Warukata wa ne. I avert my gaze as if to flee from Mio and concentrate on the work at hand while being taught by Tsukishima. <sighs> What's this? Come on, don't torture me anymore. <laughs> that night. <sighs> Alone, I breathed a sigh while stretched out on my bed. No matter what I do, I can't get what Tsukishima told me today out of my head. What is the right way for me to deal with Mio? And the more fundamental question is, how do I actually feel about Mio? Do I really love her like Tina and Tsukishima say? Or is this a different emotion? It's no use. My head is becoming more and more of a mess. Maybe... Like I say, I need, we need someone to drive some sense into her, into him, I mean. And maybe Konami can do that. Konami? The door is open. Yeah, I'm, I'm depressed right now. <laughs> yeah, just take a look at Konami's attire on so It never gets old. Her, her attire never gets old. <laughs> just saying. This is something to cheer me up. <laughs> Or we go through this depressing phase. Uh, now that you mention it, seems I forgot to change. Likely because it's already rather late, Konami is wearing her pajamas. So what brings you to my room at this hour? Mm. Okay. A text from you? Well, if you're the one she sent the text to, I don't think there's any reason to let me know about it. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Uh, okay. Well, now we trust the display of her cell phone in front of me. But what's written there is... I'll go to school by myself tomorrow? Oh no! Now it's like we're starting to break apart, you know, because of what Yuma is doing. Seriously, see Yuma, you're you're ruining everything. You cannot delay this problem anymore. Um, what is going on in her mind? Why did she tell Konami that she would go to school by herself tomorrow? Are you freaking stupid, Yuma? <laughs> Don't tell me it's because I've recently been deliberately leaving at a later time. I'll give her a call and ask what this is about in person. No, you don't call her! You approach her! Calling her is not sincere when it comes to problems like this. Having declared that, I immediately grasped my own cell phone. She's gonna go to answer, trust me, okay, Yuma? You gotta go face, approach her face to face. The ring back tone resounds over and over again. Mio should be aware of who's calling, which is why she's ignoring your call, Yuma! That might precisely be the reason why she isn't answering the call. She's deliberately ignoring you, Yuma. You stupid. <laughs> I see. 
If she simply doesn't want to answer the call, it wouldn't have been strange if she had put her cell phone on voicemail or let her busy announcement run. But the fact that she merely doesn't answer the call means... As my thoughts are about to wander into a negative direction, my call finally gets through. Hello, Mio? She's crying. It's all because of you, Yuma. Mio? Naiteru no? Are you crying? The moment I heard Mio's crying voice through the phone, pain instantly welled up in my chest. And I also get a feeling that my vision has become darker. Say something, yeah, say something. R right. This is not the time to space out. I have to talk to Mio now. Mio, why are you crying? And also, why did you send Konami that text? Damn. God damn it. <laughs> if you only apologize, I won't understand what is going on. Take as much time as you need and slowly tell me the reason you sent that. You're the reason you are! <laughs> uh, Mio? She abruptly hung up. I call her name in panic. But all I hear is the inorganic disconnect tone. Damn it! You better go look for her right now! <laughs> Immediately, I hit the redial button to call her again. It's not gonna work. However, what I hear next is the announcement that her cell phone is turned off. Mio san, no? Yeah. What's going on? Did something happen to her? Freaking hell, this guy still acting dense! You're the reason, freaking hell! Wow! Now, guys, forgive me for always complaining right here, but I'm really making face talk right now! I became restless as these kinds of thoughts swam through my mind. I'm going to head over to a place. Yes, Yuma, you go look for her right now! Better go now! Thanks. With Konami's voice in my back, I rushed out of the house. Ah, ah, ah. Having reached the shrine grounds, I halt for a moment and calm my ragged breathing. The shrine may be close by, but as you expect from sprinting up so many stairs at full speed, it's pretty rough. Ah, ah. Phew. Once I've settled down, I make a beeline for their house. Then, at that moment, <laughs> if Mio is expecting Yuma, Mio san? For some reason, I find Mio standing in the temple grounds. Um, why are you. Yeah. Is she in her room right now? That's right. She texted Konami that she will go to school by herself tomorrow, so. Actually, it's not because of that, but. Is. that so? Musa nods as if fully as if she fully understands everything. Well she may actually have heard what has been going on recently from Mio. She really un she really might understand everything. Sorry, it's all my fault. Yeah, but don't think this is the right way to go about it. I will be pissed. <laughs> I mean I am pissed right now. I mean, if I were in the game right now, I'd be like, what the hell? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that Yuma finally realizes his mistake right now. Yeah. So she really understands absolutely everything. Huh? 
she isn't going to ask me any more than this. I think she knows everything, like what you said. Uh, Miyu san? You won't blame me or scold me? Eh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's possible. I would want to avoid that. Miu is an understanding girl. Eh, um, and what about you? Oh, thank you, Miu. You're such a great girl. Best wife. <laughs> yeah, alright. Manly. Miu san smirks, then walks away from me. Wait. <laughs> Wait, you're gonna stay with. Bye bye. Okay. Wait, you're gonna stay with. Now overnight? <laughs> okay. She waved her hand flutteringly and then, still wearing her Miko clothes, began to descend the shrine stairway. Thank you, Miyu san. She undoubtedly left us alone in consideration towards us. And I have to make sure I answer her feelings and expectations. I'm coming. Yo, know, here we go. Final boss. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this sounds like final showdown or something like that. But nah. <laughs> I resolve myself, then step into the house before ringing the doorbell. The door already unlocked. This is the house of my childhood friend that I've visited countless times before. So I'm very familiar with it. Having arrived in front of my destination, I knock at the door a few times. It's me, Mio. She sounds surprised. Has she been crying this whole time? Her voice just now sounded somewhat tearful to me. Ojamashimas, I'm coming in. Having decisively declared that to her, I opened the door without waiting for an answer. She still hasn't changed her clothes yet. Okay. Konbanwa, Mio. Obviously, I'm here to see you, Mio. She still, you know, puts up a smile even as she is crying. She desperately tries to hold the traces of tears by wiping her eyes with the sleeves of her uniform. At once, my start. My heart started to ache when I see her doing that. You're still wearing your uniform, huh? True. When I get when I got home I didn't have the energy to change. At that point, our exchange com comes to a pause. A hard to describe, oppressive silence fills the room. What should I say to her? There are a lot of things I want to ask her, like why she sent that text, or the reason she has been crying. Yeah, it's, and, I mean, when it comes to this kind of situations, like, it's, it's really hard to like start from what you want to say, right? Because there are so many things you want to say, but you don't know where to start, <laughs> you know? Mio too awkwardly cast her eyes down so as to avoid eye contact with me. At this point, I don't care anymore, Mio. <laughs> eh? The first to break the silence was Mio. You're not okay? Mio gazes at me with a smile that's fragile enough to crumble at any moment. I'm 
I don't know how could you say that? Yo, if you'll be fine, then why are you looking as if you're about to cry any moment? Her smile is so evidently fake that just about anyone could tell by a single glance. It feels as if my chest is about to rupture when I think that it's my fault she's making such a face. If you don't want me to worry about you, then why is it that you apologize to me while crying on the phone? Look, if there's something you're unhappy about, could you just tell me? If I'm at fault, I'll apologize and also work on it. Takara. Yo, as if she has become unable to bear what she has been holding back, large droplets of tears spilled over. What do you mean? You getting what you deserve? What are you talking about? Getting what you deserve? What is she talking about? Yeah, does this have something to do with her, her condition? I have a feeling it definitely has something to do with her condition and it's maybe like, I don't know, it's somehow related to Yuma or something like that? I find myself unable to grasp the meaning of her words and fall into confusion. It's me who decided that we can't be near each other. I'm the one who made you cry, right? How can you say it's your fault? It's a condition. When you collapse because of a condition, you can't say it's your fault. That, that, that's the condition's fault, not your fault. Do you by any chance know why you passed out? Yeah, I mean, Mio has said something about this condition earlier, right, with Nao and, and Yuri. But she said she doesn't want Yuri or Nao to like tell Yuma. She wants to keep it a secret. But now I guess we're going to find out what exactly is going on. She nods while sleeping. Then why didn't you... Wait, let me just go back. Okay. No, there's no need for you to apologize. But, just what was the cause? Okay, we're gonna learn the truth now. And as we're speaking, <laughs> I'm kind of like in a bit of tears right now, in my eyes right now. <laughs> I mean, I've not, never really gotten that emotional. Well, I, I think some other routes I've gotten a bit emotional, but never as emotional as right now. <laughs> so, still in the tearful voice, Mio begins to speak. No, I don't remember because I don't remember you telling me before. <laughs> yeah. Of course I do. You sure about that, Yuma? But well, Mio was my childhood friend. Consequently, there are countless memories I made with her when I was a kid. So there's no way for me to tell exactly which time she meant. <laughs> 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 
ずっと一緒だったもんね。Yeah, but what about it? じゃあ、ユウくんが同級生の男の子たちから女とばかり遊ぶなって言われたのは。What? The boys are just. The boys are just say that to you, ma? That might have happened at some point, yeah? It was right. I'm positive, I'm positive it was slightly before I got into my accident. At that time, I was still a brat. Because my classmates jeered at me, I didn't want to play with Mew anymore. Hmm, okay, because of what? The boy said that thing about don't play with girls all the time. Thinking back, I can only marvel at my own foolishness back then. Could it be that that's somehow related to why you passed out? Mio affirmed my question with a small nod. Okay, alright, we're getting a flashback now. Oh, that's young Mew's voice. <laughs> yeah. Ah,、uh, if only we could see their sprites though, their childhood sprites. I don't want to see, like, just like that grey grey background. But, well, I mean, we didn't get to see Yuma and Konami's young selves, so I don't think we'll get to see their、uh, Mew and Mew's young selves here either. What? Mud dumplings? <laughs> so these are like so called like self made dump, I mean like made up dumplings? Fake ones? Ah. Um, I'm just passing by. Uh, what? What? What just happened? Did I hear a slap? I, I have something else to do. Oh. Right, he, he did that because of the boys, right? Saying that. Stop playing girls the whole time, right? That, that's why he did that. Is that what actually caused、uh, Mio to like be. caused Mio to have that condition? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So, so, oh, because just now he, he like slapped Mio's hand, right? So that's why now whenever Yuma touches Mio, she'll like cry. Because it feels like he slapped her or something like that. Or rather, slapped her hand or, or something like that. I guess whatever Mew, Mew said, yeah, it's not gonna help. Cause from there on, that's when Mew starts to have this condition. So it's from this point on that Mew got the condition. So it's not really a natural condition, but a forced one. All thanks to Yuma. You said I shook off your hand then. Could it be that was. Gradually, my memories from that day grow vivid. That's right. On that day, I. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> so that was the same day he got into the accident. And that made Mio cry even more. And that's why the condition became permanent. On, on, you know? Wow. 
What a... What a... What you call that? That's really... Too... Tragic... What you... Tragically coincidental. Yeah, you could call it that. Really like... No, really cruel fate you know, to be so coincidental at that point. Ah, so it really was that day. もうね、会えなくなると思って怖かったの。ゆうくんが病院に運ばれた時ですごく怖くて。<笑> Everything's now making sense, really. Okay, so now we know that this is not a natural condition, but a forced one, an artificial one, because of some trauma. So it is a trauma, it's a result of trauma. This trauma. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, because like in, in the past I was like wondering whether this is triggered from a trauma or something like that. And yeah, it, is tri it was triggered from a trauma. This, but it's not what I thought it was. Like maybe like some guy touched her and then, I yeah, know, actually no, it's because of this particular incident. Having heard all of that, I found myself speechless. From there, it just spread and spread. Okay. Is that the cause of your androphobia? So now she's blaming herself. But it's not your fault, Mio. I mean, this happened, so. At that point, her voice was cracked by even more sobs. No way. To think that my accident had burdened me with such an emotional trauma. So all of it, everything, is all my fault. In a way, yeah, I guess. So then this means you passed out the other day because I shook off your hand? Mio affirms in a small nod. So I've been the cause of everything. Pain hearted. Nah, I don't think it's anyone's fault actually, to be honest. I mean, maybe you must partially at fault, but yeah, I mean, these things happen already, so. That's not true. If I had been in your shoes, it might have turned out the same for me, too. If only I hadn't shaken her hand off at that time. If only I hadn't passed in front of the shrine stairs that day. But yeah, I mean, no point thinking of this in hindsight, really. Because what's happened, what happened, happened, right? One after another, feelings of regret well up. How could I have been talking about rehab that pretentiously? All the while convinced I'm looking after you. Talk about arrogance here when the problem is your, is you actually caused the problem, but... I'm the cause of it, right? In that case, it's only natural that I should be the one to help her cure your game. That aside, first of all, now, I'm sorry, Mio. That's right. Even if it is way too late, I still have to apologize first.
The kind words she directs at me while displaying a tear-stained face makes my heart ache. At times like this, I can neither lend you a shoulder to cry on, nor console you. Even though I am the one who sought the seat, why is it that Mio was the one who had to suffer, and not me? Isn't that just plain absurd? Uh, I don't, well, say Mio, I'm repeating myself with this, but would you let me help you cure your androphobia? Not enough, Mio. Until I've, I've cured your androphobia, yeah, it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, so. Yeah. Mio, uh, it's definitely true that, you know, uh, you might have to take responsibility. Yeah, so. I mean, even more than I did before. Even if your disorder is something that lasts your entire life, I'll take responsibility and see it cured. No matter how much time that may take. Nope, I need to. It's my responsibility, Mio. Because I love you! That's why I need to take responsibility, okay, girl? Neither do I have any reason whatsoever not to deal with it. Please. Or is it simply that I'm not good enough? Yo, only guy. Why? Yo, why? Having said so, she smiles stout heartedly. What? I'm not wasting my life on someone like you. I love you, that's why my life belongs to yours and your life belongs to mine. <laughs> but of course that's we can't really say that, not until we have confessed to her. And we are really we truly love her. She's still smiling. However, I can also sense a mixed in shade of loneliness. I don't want her to display such an expression. I want her to always genuinely smile. That's because I... Aha. Uh -huh. huh? The music stopped. You go. Are you gonna kiss her, Mio? I mean, are you gonna kiss her, Yuma? <laughs> Could it be... This is... Koi? Love? This suffocating, painful sensation I've always been feeling inside of me. That something in my heart that felt like it, it was shrouded in mist. Now the mist is slowly fading away and it's finally becoming clear. If I convey these feelings to Mio, is something going to change for her? Something's going to change, that's for sure, yes. As that thought passed my mind, my mouth had already begun to move. Mio? We're going to confess. Okay. Here we go. Skida. I love you. Mio no koto ga skida. I love you. So even if it takes me my whole life, I want to be by your side until your phobia is cured. At the same time, these words leave my lips. All the feelings I've harbored towards Mio rapidly transform into one large emotion. Love. Koi. Yes, you. And only you, Mio. Yeah, I'm serious. Mio's face warps as tears begin to bell up again. Sorry, I suppose hearing that from me must be nothing but a bother. But more importantly, do you love me too, Mio? Sobbing, she denies what I said. Oh shit, she's shaking. Well, I mean, 
you might never thought that he would fall in love with you in the other roots, but, <laughs> but that's beside the point. Although the cry makes her choke on her words, she clearly imparts to me that it isn't a bother to her at all. Yes, I'm really alright with someone like you, Mio. Of course, I wouldn't want anyone else but you. I look her right in the eyes and confess. The girl who is my childhood friend, and who has always been right by my side. I always thought this relationship would never change. However, now that I've, now that I've come to harbor feelings that go beyond that, I've come to love her. Would you let me hear your feelings you? Your feelings too? Yes, feelings must be mutual, Mio. Yeah. If you tell me you need time, I'll wait. If you reject me, you're hurt, but I'll accept it. <sighs> Alright, I'm prepared, Mio. But I think I know what the answer is. <laughs> Okay, mental preparation, deep breath. <sighs> I emotionlessly wait for Mio's next words, just like a patient who is about to hear the nature of her of his disease. Yes. <laughs> well, I I really know what the answer is, but still, I you know it still feels like. It, yeah, you will still feel overjoyed, you know, hearing Mio's answer, hearing Mio say this, you know, you certainly will. If you don't, you know, then something's wrong with you. <laughs> ah. In response to the truth Mio's words inform me of, my heart is set in a powerful motion. Okay. I mean this same reaction occurred in Yuri's route, right? When Yuri confessed her love to Yuma and then Yuma accepts her. Well, before actually before Yuma even accepted Yuri's confession, Mio is like, okay please take care and then she let she ran away and then she just broke down. Yeah. It was the same for me. I thought of Mio as my precious childhood friend. Mio, I only had the best intentions in mind, but to think that would bring so much sadness to her. Tsukishima even specifically told me that my way wasn't right, and yet I... I see. Mio also only saw me as her child friend, but then realized that there's more. Even though the catalyst was something so sad that I could cry yet. That's a really sad catalyst. To think that it will become the trigger for us to realize our feelings. <laughs> Talk about ironic. But you know that will only make us even sadder. I suppose that's the reason she was crying on the phone. No, it won't be a bother, Mio. No. Of course I am. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course I'm alright with you. No. Yeah, of course I'm alright with you. Okay? It's not, of course I'm going to bother you. No. <laughs> of course. I'm alright with you, okay, Mio? <laughs> I'm sorry that I caused you so much sorrow. 
I didn't fully understand your feelings. I didn't consider them. Mio happily smiles with her whole face. A little rehab? What do you mean we're gonna touch here and there? <laughs> rehab? As I'm about to ask her what she meant, Mio. Oh! Wow! Whoa! That's the first thing Mio does? Wow! A kiss right from the start and she's touching him just like that. So that's why when I was asking rehab, what do you mean by rehab? Touching here and there? I, I didn't expect a kiss. <laughs> oh, and we see Yuma blinking it's the first time. <laughs> okay. She jumps at me and presses her lips on mine. From this, we, it, it looks as if like Mio can't take it anymore. Like, finally, we have confessed. Now I'm going to pour out all my emotions that I've held back for so long and kiss you. <laughs> the soft sensation of the lips. Mio's scent tickles my nose. That alone is enough to throw my heart into such frenzy that it hurts. She draws her lips only mere millimeters away and smiles at me happily. Yo. And Mio doesn't seem to be crying, but I guess that's because she's kissing him, Yuma, so she's enjoying it. That's why probably it overwhelms the sadness that she thinks of whenever she touches Yuma or any other guy. We overlap our lips once again. The long breaths that escape her seem to contain a bittersweet gloss. Mio's body temperature, which is directly transmitted to me, now causes my mind to go numb. A long, long kiss that grants the illusion that it might last forever. At some point, without realizing it, I've also entwined my arms around her, embracing her closely. Presumably happy about being embraced by me, Mio shows her smile. Then, we press our lips together even more deeply, even deeper. At that point, I finally caught on to one certain issue. Right now, I'm touching Mio, right? But you don't see her crying, that's the thing. <laughs> because she's enjoying it. I'm reluctant to end this blissful moment with Mio. But I have no other choice in this instant. But she's not crying. <laughs> if this goes on, it'll again make her. Huh? However, as I closely examined her face directly from the front, there were neither traces of tears nor any signs that she's about to cry. Precisely because now that we have we have confessed, you know that love. That she's enjoying it, she's embracing, right? Is uh, is yeah, overcoming the sadness that she feels whenever she touches a guy. So, Mio, are you all right? Well, I mean, we've been embracing each other, right? And far from just that, we've also been kissing. That's an entirely different dimension from just touching her hand. <laughs> Does it seem like, oh, her condition has been cured? Maybe it's just for now, maybe, but we'll see how. Could it be that you're 
Kyot? Kyot, the moment we confessed our feelings to each other. Could something as convenient as that really happen? However, I don't really care about that. <laughs> I just want to kiss her again. Yes, go, go, kiss her again. In that case, can we give it another go, Mio? Embrace Mio once again. <laughs> now she's crying again. Okay, maybe at that moment it was because she's the one who took initiative. That's why she didn't like start crying. But now that she's aware, yeah. <laughs> so because that time when she's kissing Yuma, she's that thought wasn't she wasn't conscious about that 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 the past and all that. But now that she's conscious, she's aware. Oops. What? Tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Sorry, can I embrace you even more? <laughs> I I'm sorry, Mio! I hurriedly distanced myself from Mio as I saw that she had started to cry. Most likely unable to hold them back, large drops of tears begin to pour out. Why? Just now we undoubtedly kissed without any signs of tears showing. Well, like I said, maybe it's because Mio is the one who took initiative, so... <laughs> so I suppose this means she didn't get cured after all then. But there's improvement, there is improvement, so we're on the right track. Is there some sort of reason for this? Don't apologize. Besides, I just told you, didn't I? That I'll always be by your side until you're cured. <laughs> so you can cry as much as you want now. I'll remain by yourself, uh, by your side the whole time. <laughs> All right. And so I directed gentle words at the sobbing mule until her tears run dry. After spending another hour together, I made my way home. Well, at least we're you know, made up already, so that's good. <laughs>